What's going on, everybody? Welcome to the Termical Topics Podcast. I'm your host, Pat Deneen, alongside the associate. In this episode, well, we're going to talk about the WWE Royal Rumble coming up in just less than two weeks' time, Kev. Uh, also going to talk about TNA Hard to Kill uh, coming up this weekend, as well as New Japan Pro Wrestling's Battle in the Valley. Uh, so we have a lot to talk about. We're going to touch upon a few different things. It's exciting to see uh, for the first time in the better part of, what, uh, six, seven years uh, TNA is coming back. No longer Impact Wrestling. I know a lot of people who are excited. Some say, oh, what's really going to change? Uh, if it's just one thing that changes, I think morale is going to be even better in Impact Wrestling. And to be quite honest with you, you never really hear any complaints come from that company. Everybody seems to be having a great time in the locker room, regardless of their direction on the show. And so you really only hear good things. So, you know, I applaud them for that. Excited for them. Again, Battle in the Valley will be exciting as well. Some really good matchups headlined by Okada and Osprey, which should be great. And uh, we're going to talk about the Royal Rumble, Kev. So how are you feeling today? Good, good. Yeah. Ready, ready to talk, talk? Some All right. I'll, you took the words right out of my mouth. You're ready. So let's just get right into it. Of course, on January the 27th, St. Petersburg, Florida, we will see uh, at Tropicana Field, the Royal Rumble. This is going to be the 37th uh, rendition of the Rumble. I'm able to keep up with it because that's, well, I am 37. So there, there's that. And so far, the four matches that are scheduled, obviously, the men's Royal Rumble match. The women's Royal Rumble match, both 30 men and women entrants for the match. We're all familiar. Uh, we have Logan Paul going up against Kevin Owens. Well, Kevin trying to uh, get that United States championship off of Logan Paul, even though we both believe that Logan Paul will probably walk into WrestleMania 40 in Philadelphia, Lincoln Financial Stadium, uh, Lincoln Financial Field. Sorry, Philly. Uh, anybody from Philly listening to that. Uh, Logan Paul is probably going to go there. And, well, I personally think it will be against LA Knight. I don't know who you think, but we'll get to that. And anyway, we have a fatal four-way for the undisputed WWE Universal Championship, uh, that being Roman Reigns going up against Randy Orton, AJ Styles, and who I just mentioned, LA Knight. Uh, so we're going to talk all that uh, in just a little bit, Kev. But I want to start off with um, my first question here. I just want to jump right to it. We don't have to elaborate on it for days. Uh, do you have a favorite to win the Men's Royal Rumble here? And you know what? Before I say that, I'm sorry. Kevin, mm. that is, it's my fault. I wanted to mention uh, the confirmed competitors for the men's and women's match. If I could say that real quick, and then I want to okay, hear yeah. your answer, okay? All right, so for the 2024 Men's Royal Rumble match, we have five uh, people who have confirmed already. It started with the November 27th episode of Raw, where Cody Rhodes confirmed on the December 11th episode, CM Punk. Uh, now we have Shinsuke Nakamura, uh, who just last week confirmed he'll be in the Rumble as well. Bobby Lashley, uh, who announced it on the January 5th episode of SmackDown. And of course, the most recent this past week, uh, Drew McIntyre announced that he will be entering the Royal Rumble as well. Now, out of these five men, uh, Kev, we have three former winners, right? Shinsuke Nakamura in 2018, Drew McIntyre in 2020. And of course, uh, most recently, Cody Rhodes last year, uh, winning the 2023 Royal Rumble. Now, although Bobby Lashley hasn't had any success uh, in the Royal Rumble match, uh, let's not forget last year, I believe, what was it, just before WrestleMania? Wrestle, uh, I believe maybe that's SmackDown. He won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royale. Uh, for, so for whatever that's worth. And I'm going to go over the women's list when we get to that match. Um, but let's talk about the men's. Again, who do you have as the front runner to win this year's Men's Royal Rumble? I'm also trying to consider the outcome of, like, what is to happen at WrestleMania. Yeah, sure. Um. Well, all roads lead to WrestleMania, you know, whoever yeah, wins yeah, this match. Yeah, so yeah, it makes ex sense, bro. Exactly. Uh, the one guy that I had in mind, I don't really see him wrestling for said title at WrestleMania. So, like, uh, I'm going to change my answer midway through. Is that I'm just going to throw out his name. Is that uh, I don't drum, even know how, if he's declared or anything, but I'll go with uh, The Rock. The Rock. Okay. All right. You got The Rock uh, winning this year's Royal Rumble. You know, it's funny you say that because I went completely against the grain last year. And although I got the, the right number, all right, I said last year the pick was uh, for myself was The Rock. I said The Rock mm -hmm. is going to come in at number 30 and win. And who came in at number 30, Kev? Cody Rhodes. Everybody picked Cody last year. You know, the vast majority. And I said, you know what? They're going to be different. I think The Rock comes in. Made sense. Hollywood, Rock, Roman, do it. I wish they did that. I wish that they did that last year and got it over with per se. And that's why, you know, I, I uh, certainly am not picking the yeah. rock two years in a row. I'll, tell, I'll give you my uh, pick in just a moment's time, but uh, okay. I respect that. The rock look, I, uh, again, that was my pick last year. Do you have him 
coming at a particular number uh, this year? Would it be 27 or after? I'll say just for the hell of it, 25. 25. Okay. The Rock. So you're sticking with that. Final answer? Yeah. Yeah. Final answer. Okay. Do you want to mention who you were going to pick or no? Uh, no. <laughs> no? Okay. Keeping that top secret. All right. That's yeah. fine. I am going with... um. You know, since I did not go with the obvious choice last year, this year I think I'm going to go with the semi-obvious choice. Uh, I do not see uh, much like Shawn Michaels, Stone Cold, and uh, who was the uh, third person to do it, Kev? Uh, win back-to-back Royal Rumbles. Slip in my mind right now. Uh, but I know it's certainly, again, HBK, Austin, and Cody Rhodes would be the fourth person to do it, right? Mm-hmm. If he were to win back-to-back Rumbles. Um I'm kicking yeah. myself for not remembering. Is the it, third was one. that before my time? What's that? You're trying to be funny? Old joke? You call me an old timer? <laughs> oh, well, I, meant, I meant that back to back winner. Yeah, well, I, I believe so. Yeah, I feel like right. Michaels was probably what? The mid 90s and best. Austin was the late 90s, I believe. Austin was the last person to do it. Was he the last person? I don't know. I, that's why I feel like there was. Uh, oh, yes, he must have been. And you know yeah. who the third person was? It had to be Hulk Hogan. Because I think he was the late 80s, early 90s. How, how, how does that yeah. obvious answer, uh, you know, evade us? I know. He was the late 80s, early 90s, I believe, or 9091, either or. It was Hogan, Michaels, um, Stone Cold, and Cody being the fourth person to do it. Will he get it done? I believe he'd be the mm-hmm. only the fourth person to do it. Personally, Kev, I am still not going to go with Cody. I know I didn't go with oh. Cody. I know, I know I did not go with Cody last year. And obviously yeah. I made a mistake. I had the rock coming in at number 30. I'm going to go with CM Punk. I'm going to go with CM Punk because I still feel as if Cody's going to find a way back to Roman for WrestleMania. Obviously we both have different visions here, which we're going to talk about at the end of the show, uh, rock Roman, um, Cody Roman potentially. And I think CM Punk wins, obviously calls out Seth Rollins. Uh, they both finally get to main event uh, WrestleMania perhaps probably night one. And look, if I'm going to pick a winner, I'll just say it right here. If it is punk Rollins, I'm going with Rollins and still. Yeah. And then I could add to that too. I know I'm months ahead of it, but I do think we get a match that was kind of leaked, but I I do see this match happening where we do get Damian priest for a screw money in the bank. Uh, Briefcase is on the line in the ladder match at mania. Drew Mm. wins that perhaps earlier that night. Drew cashes in after Seth wins. Drew defeats Seth. Drew finally gets his WrestleMania moment in front of a live audience, stadium audience, that he should have got at WrestleMania 36, uh, where COVID happened. He defeated Brock in a gym, basically. But that's just my whole take on that <clears throat> championship scene, right? Yeah. Yeah. How about the women? Uh, well, okay, if you want to add to that, and then well, I want to get over to the women here. Well, uh, it's funny that you said, you know, CM Punk, because that was the person I was going to say. You know, maybe the winner. Okay. Yeah, but I, I, you know, I decided against it just because. That's fine. Uh, well, the, the 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 whole feud of you know Rollins and CM Punk, um, we we got to see it kind of slightly unfold right before the new year, right? You know, right. Uh, since what, uh, at a uh, Survivor Series, right? And, um, I don't know. Sometimes I feel like some some rivalries need to be played out sooner rather than later so and i feel like waiting all the way till mania might be a little bit too long that's why i didn't want to say that you know okay and and we're gonna we we might pick back up with that when we talk about uh the rock and cm punk yeah. and rollins and reigns <laughs> and cody uh, towards the end of the it, show it, 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 it's funny because i'm gonna end up sounding hypocritical but each matchup is different each feud is different so sure. with so with that being i feel like more like more red hot you know CM Punk and, and and Rollins, I feel like that feud should happen sooner rather than later. Versus uh, okay. the other the other championship title. I mean, we but, are we are officially only less than three months away from WrestleMania, and realistically, yeah. it's not happening at the Rumble. Obviously, that's where we're going to find out the direction yeah. of said competitors. All we have is Elimination Chamber because they move fast lane to the fall, right? Mm-hmm. So, other than Elimination Chamber. Uh, that's it, right? We don't have another premium live event scheduled. And honestly, Mania is going to be here in the blink of an eye. So I think it's fine. I respect and understand your reasoning for your choice. And we'll see what happens. But let's head over to the women's Royal Rumble. Yeah. Now, the five names 
I believe, no, the men had five. The women only have four names announced as of this recording. 2024 Women's Royal Rumble uh, confirmed competitors. Bailey was the first one to announce it on SmackDown December 15th. Nia Jax announced it on Raw the following Monday. Becky Lynch announced it uh, last week, the same day uh, Shinsuke did during the WWE special. And Bianca Belair announced the January 5th episode of SmackDown. Now, of course, here we have two former uh, winners of the Royal, Women's Royal Rumble. Becky, 2019, worked out well for her. Bianca, 2021, worked out well for her. Yeah. So uh, we'll see what happens as far as that's concerned. As far as this list is concerned, I'm going to go with uh, I'm going to go with one of the favorites. I'm sticking with the favorites this year, Kev. I'm going to go with Bailey as my winner for the Women's Royal Rumble here. I know a lot of people are saying yeah. Becky. I could see it happen. I could see Bianca too. Makes sense. Uh, but I'm going to go with Bailey. I'm really curious with this. Um, uh, what is it uh, with their faction damage control? What's going to happen here? Will EO still be champion? Potentially EO versus Bailey in Mania. I would love to see it. I think you could still do Becky Rhea on Raw regardless. Um, so we'll see. I, go either way. You could still do the same if Becky wins and goes against Rhea, and you could still find a way to make it Bailey versus EO. So so we'll see. But then right. where's Bianca? Bianca was supposed to get, go against Charlotte, right? With the title or not, Charlotte's out the better part of this year. So that really makes me wonder what's going to happen with Bianca. Uh, again, title involved or not, super curious. So for me, I'm actually <laughs> – I'm actually going with Bailey as well, okay. um, but but not for like maybe the same reasons. For me, it, how you know I look through the winners of the pa- you know the past victors of said Royal Rumble, and uh, you know we of course we've had a Charlotte, we had Becky Lynch, and the two names that you you don't see there are a Bailey or in this case a uh, Sasha Banks. Sasha Banks, not, as we previously discussed, that we don't see her coming back this time around um so i want to say that they're going to give this this nod to bailey you know kind of just having the each winner be of um you know the four horse staple that we never really had but you know get, you know letting her get the victory at the royal rumble and then as for her wrestlemania match i don't know per se what will happen i don't know if i don't know if she'll have her you know her group help her lead you know the victory there you know get the win you know through interference or whatever i don't know if they turn on her but it, i think it'll set up a good dynamic for her 2024 to utilize her a lot more okay i like your pick obviously who well, i picked bailey <laughs> and it makes a lot of sense now i'm super curious here kev mm. now we obviously both picked bailey will it be against eo who knows whoever the champ may be now it, let's just say hypothetically the champion is not bianca belair that Bailey would be wanting to go up against. It's, it had been said probably for the better part of a year now that Bianca would be going up against the likes of Charlotte, title or not, at Mania. Uh, again, that, that match does not need a title at all. Could have easily seen it with it. Either way, what happens with Bianca Belair? I There's a part of me that wanted to pick Bianca to become a two-time mm-hmm. winner simply based off the fact she's had a match the last three Manias. Right, she was uh, the competitor going up against Sasha WrestleMania 37. Got the job done, SmackDown Women's Champion. She got her redemption from Becky Lynch. That whole fiasco, uh, SummerSlam 2021, where Becky won in seconds with a manhandle slam. Uh, Bianca wins the Raw Women's Championship. Right, that was, mm. um, or was it the SmackDown Women's Championship? I forget. No, it's the SmackDown Women's Championship that she had won back. I believe it was. Or was it Raw? I forget. No, they did the title swap with Charlotte and Becky. I forget. <laughs> that was a whole mess. Yeah. Speaking of 2021, anyway, she had won the Raw Women's Championship, long story short, WrestleMania uh, 38 in Dallas, right? Now, mm-hmm. here we are, WrestleMania 39, yet again, Bianca Belair uh, going up against the likes of Asuka as the Raw Women's Champion. And she got it done. Huh. So this was... You know, this was the only year out of the last three that I did not pick Bianca to win. I believe I went with Asuka, and it ends up, uh, Bianca ended up losing at the next pay-per-view, I believe, to, to Asuka at Backlash. Anyway, Bianca's three for three at Mania with gold on the line. Whether she went in as champion or not, she left as champion, and that's all that matters, 37, 38, 39. That being said, even if she's not in the title picture at WrestleMania 40, a milestone at that, I mean... Personally, I think Bianca needs to be on the card based off of that. Even if there's not a title, a title would obviously be nice. Bianca mm-hmm. needs a match. That person would have been Charlotte Flair. What does 
Bianca do now? Because she's had feuds with, again, speaking of the four horsewomen, right, in WWE, she's had notable matches with Sasha, with Becky, back-to-back manias, nonetheless. Had her feuds with Bailey in and out. And Mm -hmm. this would be a perfect time uh, to have her go up against Charlotte, but obviously that's off the table. So what do you think? You know, uh, considering one of my surprise entries for the the Women's Royal Rumble, I feel like I could kind of like uh, construe some type of feud happening at WrestleMania with uh, Bianca. I think it could work out. Okay, but uh, you're going to get to that once you mention them. You, you'll pick yeah, back yeah, up yeah. with that. Okay. Yeah, just fine. just uh, just give me a reminder of that. Like that surprise entry will lead back to a feud with Bianca. I remember. It's your surprise rest- entrant, though. It's your surprise. Mm-hmm. Okay. Very interesting. Well, speaking of which, Kev, I won't have to remind you because – you're going to tell us who your surprise is before I tell you mine. Um, <laughs> who do you got being your surprise uh, for uh, the women's so, for the women's Royal Rumble first? All right, yeah. Um, seeing how this person has been doing so well on the brand that they they're established on, I see this person making an impact. Uh, you know, at the Royal Rumble is going to be Tiffany Stratton. Okay, now, I like it. You know, you know she's finishing up her storyline. Uh, maybe hopefully with uh, you know, with Fallon or whatever, and to come, you know, and she debuts. At well, the does Royal this Rumble. Con- does this con- is this considered a surprise or a debut? Mm, I, I I don't know the nuances. I would, all right, I would say I would, more I, debut. I, 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 or, or do well, you think we, she we, maybe we, she we, doesn't stay up there? Adam Cole was a surprise, I guess, and he didn't stay yeah. on the main roster a few years back, so it, yeah, it could be so. a surprise, I suppose. But um. You know, we see her, you know, maybe she does. Maybe she's the one that eliminates Bianca or something. You okay. know, tugs That'd on be a tugs, hell of a matchup. Too tough, tug, too tug, tough tugs on her hair, you know, the equivalent mm-hmm. of tugging on Superman's cape. Yeah. You know, it leads to them, you know, confronting each other. All right. I'm here for I that. I don't know match. if a matchup would happen at Elimination Chamber, but they could easily set up a feud for WrestleMania. Yeah. Okay. I, I like that. That's a, that's a pretty good one. Um. While, while we're on topic here, what, what is your surprise for the men's Royal Rumble? Mm, this one I had to pick between a few people, but uh, considering this person also had, a, you you could say a very good 2022-2023, I'm gonna go with Braun Breaker. You know, okay, you know, uh, the the guy with the dog in him. You know, yeah, yeah, um, absolutely. Two uh, guy, two people from NXT. Uh, two people yeah, from uh, two former champs. Him, yeah, okay. I could see him. You know, getting a few eliminations. You know, causing a stir. And then ultimately being eliminated, um, not surviving too long, but doing you know fairly well. All right. Well, for the men's uh, Royal Rumble, my surprise. I'm going to go with the popular rumored pick because I, I was a big fan of his back in the day. One, two, three, kid. Not so much six in WCW with NWO, but when he mm. returned as X Pac, big fan. X Pac. That name's been going around a couple weeks now, so I'm going to go with X Pac as a surprise. Uh, again, I know it's call it cheating if you will, but. I'm very excited to see him potentially. That's that's a name I loved. So X Pac from the uh, from the men's rumble for the women's. I didn't jot one down because I feel like it's a much smaller scale, right? There's a lot more men out there uh, and options and opportunities, uh, past, present, future, to be a surprise than the women's division. The women, this is what they've had the Royal Rumble now for since 2018. So they've had quite a few. We saw a lot of returns, a lot of surprises. Obviously, some debuts coming up from NXT or other companies. So it's really hard to say. There, there's no one in particular that I would really like to see uh, that we haven't seen already. Mm-hmm. But um, as far as the surprise, there's numerous women you could talk about from NXT. Roxanne Perez, Tiffany Stratton, like you said, two great names. Yeah. Cora, J- Cora J, that's that, fun. That's, you know, Lyra uh, Valkyria, yeah. the, the yeah. current NXT I- woman's fan. Yeah, for me, I, I didn't have any of the NXT champions just because I thought they wanted to keep them healthy. Um, but I did have, you know, on my list, uh, I had a Cora Jade and I also had a Trick Williams. But I picked Tiffany and, and Braun over the others. Yeah, I think that's I think those were the uh, more likely of choices. Right. So I'm yeah. not even going to pick one for the women's. Not that I don't want to. It's just there's not one that really sticks out to me uh, at this moment. But I'm going to start off debuts because it, it would be official as a debut. And I'm going to go with the pick that I that I had chose last year that we didn't get to see. But now he's in the company. Different role, not an official wrestler yet, right? Front office, 
I'm going to go with the SmackDown GM, Nick Aldis, in the mm. Royal Rumble. And this could really be interesting, maybe leading to a match for him, um, not necessarily at the Chamber, maybe a Rumble match. I mean, I'm sorry, maybe a WrestleMania match or going forward. Maybe he'll become a permanent fixture. Although I do love what he's doing on SmackDown as GM. Uh, maybe he shows up in the Rumble. I'm going to go with Nick Aldis for the men again with the women. As far as a debut, I could see it being somebody from NXT. I'm okay with either of those two names I mentioned just a few moments ago. Roxanne Perez, Tiffany Stratton, uh, like you said. Mm. How about you? Yeah, overall, good picks. Um, yeah. Uh, so so you want a debut, right? Yeah, and, and it, it could be a call-up. It, it could, Like I said, it could be NXT. I, I know you kind of went that route with Ron Breaker and Tiffany Stratton for your surprises. Well, I mean, I guess a debut would core J counts, right? Yeah, that's fine. You could still pencil yeah. those in. Still counts. Yeah. Yeah. Still a surprise, still a debut. I guess, you know, when you when we say debut, it would probably mean that they're gonna stay on the main roster. Not to say Core J couldn't. I think if we did see her, she probably would be going back down to NXT, where whereas I feel like Tiffany Stratton, she really doesn't have unfinished business, especially since she's already been champion. If they if they decide to call Tiffany up, I feel like she is on More either Raw or SmackDown, whereas Core Jade, I feel like she has unfinished business. Whether that means she becomes champ one day or not, we'll see. But I could see Stratton sticking around. But either or, they're interchangeable. How about as far as the men? Any debuts you see for them, or you want to leave that one empty? I think I'm gonna leave that one empty because I. It's fine. No, no nope. stress. Yeah, no I don't see something coming to mind right now. It's, it's uh, very early. All right, in the last category, yeah, we still got a couple of weeks. Uh, let's go with returns here. Uh, I'm gonna start off with one. Um, you may have one, if not both of these, but for the return, uh, for the men might as well wait a couple more weeks. We know he's no longer with AEW. I'm going to go with Andrade El Idolo. I'm now turning into Andrade Cien Almas yet again, uh, in the men's rumble. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's, that, that's my pick for like a return. Okay. I can easily hear his music hit because, uh, oh, yeah. was, was, was he, you saw him at the 2018 Royal Rumble, was it? Well, he was definitely in one or two. He, I want to say he yeah. was the first time he appeared was 2018. So, 2018, you know, what? yeah, probably, probably around that time. All right. So, 2018 yeah. Rumble. Um, who do you have? I'll let I started with the men. So, you're going to have for the women. Who do you see returning as far as the women are concerned? <laughs> well, <laughs> it's not Sasha Banks. Um, yeah, it's not looking that way. Maybe a few weeks ago it was. <clears throat> I don't know if they want to. I don't know this person's contract status though. That that, that was like my, my whole thing. It's all right. With, we don't know all the fine you know fine details, but go go with someone you either want to see or you think likely to be uh, returning to the company. I don't know what would what would Mickey Jane, Mickey James or Mickey Jane, Mickey Jane, who's sorry. that cousin? Um, yeah. okay. <laughs> I'm gonna go with uh, I'm gonna go with Naomi. You know again. Oh well, that's it's, yeah. That's I'm. It, Andrade and Naomi are kind of obvious ones. Both, uh, well, we know Andrade left AEW, so he's coming to WWE, obviously. And, um, you know, Trinity said to be finishing up this weekend, potentially dropping her uh, now TNA Knockouts Championship to Jordan Grace, that she's returning to WWE. So Naomi, mm. very well. That being said, in my opinion, if if she does uh, drop this Saturday to Jordan Grace, I think it's a no-brainer mm-hmm. that we'll see her. Not just back with the company, but at the Rumble. So I'm going to go with Andrade and, and Naomi as my two. Now, he, um, get, you would love to see her her old get up, you know, with the with the glow and everything. Dude, okay. I'm glad you brought that up. Thank you. Love Naomi. You know as well as anybody. I think mm. uh, you could see the bottom half of the poster over here. Uh, this Naomi Feel the Glow stuff. <laughs> Kevin actually had made me this uh, this collage of sorts poster. I believe it was on my 35th birthday. Yeah. Looks great. Looks great. I love Naomi, but it is time to hang up the whole glow stick. Mm. Love it. it. It came about in 2016, right? Uh, right around the yeah. time that SmackDown called themselves SmackDown Live. Uh, brand splits were a thing. Uh, and so it ran its course, you know, WWE from, again, uh, late 2016 until the time she left. What was that? The spring of 2022? It's a good mm-hmm. time. Almost six full years. Now she debuts with Impact last spring. Again, she's had a great run there, been champion for the last six months or so. But, dude, she's still doing the whole glow bit. And I know it's familiarity. I get it. But 
it's time for a change. I was hoping I saw that change in impact. Obviously yeah. not the case. That being said, long-winded way to answer your question. She doesn't need to come back as a heel. I doubt she'll return as a heel. That'd be cool. I I'd be okay with that even. It doesn't need to go that extreme. But even if she does return as a baby face, Naomi, give me something different. Really. Yeah. Team Bad was refreshing because that was a different side of her. Not just as a heel <laughs> yeah. for that year, but I, I even like to retire. I thought it was fantastic. And she had a little bit more of an edge to her. And I, I kind of like that chip on your shoulder mentality. So give me a different yeah. Naomi if it is as early as a rumble, simply put. <clears throat> no more glow. Let's retire the glow. Something new in 2024. <laughs> uh, no, just just for me, because like I, I'm sure she has a personal connection to it. And like that's how maybe she's able to connect with the fan bases that right. they recognize her that. like that. I get that. And, and, and I kind of, and I'm going to throw out a name, hopefully fans won't kill me, is that like Jeff Hardy would do that. You know, he would, back in the early, well, like late 90s, early 2000s, he would do kind of like that whole glow thing as well when he would do his entrance. Um, and he did that for the longest time just because he, you know, he knew that the fan base connected with that. That was something that they ended up doing as well. You know, they, they ended up dressing up just like that using the glow paint. So I don't right. know if she feels like that, you know. I get it. But there's, you know, dude, there comes a time. I mean, I understand why she did that outside of WWE because that's how most people were familiar with her. You mm. know, whether they watch WWE consistently or not. Oh, that's, the, you know, that's the lady that does the whole glow thing. It's so cool. Like, mm. I get it. But from a fan of her, which I've been a fan of her for well over 10 years since she's been yeah. uh, with the Funkadactyls with Cameron, right? Um, it, but it's time. It, it's time to change it up. Be happy to see it, have her back in WWE. That's fine. If she so chooses to do that, but it, it's time to move forward, bro. Let me ask forward. you this, uh, just to add on. What kind of changes would you like to see if she were to do something? Naomi? Yeah. Uh, I would like, listen, I love the whole glow bit. Happy go lucky. Happy to be here. I'll still whoop your butt in the ring. That's great. Give me a little bit of a, I want some more attitude, chip on my shoulder. Again, does not have to be a heel. If she is, great. I think that would work out perfectly for her too. I want to see more of a serious side. Like I'm back and mm -hmm. I'm going to kick some ass. There is plenty of talent in NXT. Raw and SmackDown have gotten noticeably more competitive. Hell, they may be signing Julia, right, from, from Japan in the coming months. She may be available in the spring. And although they said they may be putting her through NXT at first, you know, to work on her English and all that, she's going to be an immediate contender when she comes to the main roster. There's a lot of stiff competition on WWE. And so a lot has changed in the past year and a half, two years since Naomi left. And to find her way in the thick of things, she can't just come in smiling. Oh, yeah, it's so good to see you again. You can have your backstage reunions, you know, shoot your mm. TikTok videos and catering. That's fine. But when when the cameras are rolling, when you're doing your promos, your vignettes, when you're having your matches, she needs to be all business, in my opinion. So the biggest thing would be chip on your, chip on your shoulder, attitude, you know, kick ass, take names. And somehow it's going to be tough because there's no mid-card title for the women. And yeah. I don't think she's going to jump into the tag title thing again where she left with Sasha. She's going to have to find her way to one of those titles. The good thing is there's two of them, but you got to find your way to one. It's funny because, uh, you know, we previously mentioned that I, I I felt like I need to see a change from, from Sammy Guevara, and you feel like you need to see a change from uh, oh, absolutely. And Naomi. Especially both people, you know, that we like, you know. Yeah, so we, it, we mean yeah. well by them. We mean well yeah. by them. And I've been following her the last seven, eight months in TNA, and, I, and I'm actually kind of, you know, sad to see her leave TNA already. Do I think she right. needs to have a long tenure there? I don't. I was hoping it was I at least like a four year. Safe. Me too, especially with this new rebranding of TNA. It's exciting for everybody. And, uh, you know, I, I wasn't one of those people that felt like I needed to see her in, in AEW just based on how TK has been running things. You know, Mercedes Correct. can get away with it because Mercedes is literally probably the most sought after women, uh, woman in all of professional wrestling. Certainly top three. Not to say Trinity's not. Trinity's great. But obviously Mercedes stock is just in a on a whole other level, she could kind of dictate things a little bit better. You know what I'm saying? Whereas, you know, Trinity, I think she did make the right decision. She went to impact. She became world champion. She got to have some great feuds. She didn't go to TK and get mishandled and end up on ring of honor or something ridiculous. You know what I mean? So she made the best mm. decision again. I, I just wish it was a little longer, even if it was a full calendar year with TNA May, June, but look, she, if she sorted things out with WWE, obviously your husband, Jimmy Uso, is with WWE. I get it. I always thought she'd go back at minimum minimum for that. And so here we are. It looks like she'll be back in two weeks. It's quicker than I thought she would. Uh, but here we are. So 
You know, Sasha would have returned too, but they couldn't work it out. Trinity, clearly they worked it out. So they both would have returned. Unfortunately, it didn't work out for Mercedes, but it won't be unfortunate for her if she's making mega bucks and still, you know, still having that opportunity to do what she loves with AEW. One to watch in WWE in 2024 could be NXT, Raw, SmackDown uh, for the men and women's division. Again, does not have to be in singles. Is there a tag team that caught your eye? Um you know, you tell me, do you want me to start first? Maybe give you a couple moments if you don't have them down. You know what? I have a suggestion. What if I go first for the women's and then you go first for the men? Okay, go go ahead. You So you start off. Who do you yeah. have for one to watch for a, a women in WWE? Well, uh, I'm going to kind of cheat. And, and for WWE, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to go with a uh, Ariana Grace. More specifically, you know, NXT. Santino um, Morella's daughter, right? I, I I don't know to be honest. Yeah, I'm pretty sure that's Santino's daughter. Okay, you yeah. Fact check me here. Yeah. Uh, um, you know, uh, her character, you know, from from the breakout tournament, it stood out to me. You know, having you know, kind of a, you know, the whole really emphasis on the grace and everything. But then when she's getting in the ring, you can see that like she wants to be more ruthless. Tenacious, but she still yeah. plays up. She still mm-hmm. plays up the character of of being nice. Um, so. I feel like she could have, yeah. yeah. I feel like she could have a, a pretty big um, year, you know, for twenty twenty four. Just and I say that because like someone that I didn't really, uh, I don't want to say acknowledge, but like didn't really have a lot of stock in was like a Kiana James early twenty twenty three. I love you know, Kiana her, James. Yeah, with, with her like with her initial storyline with like you know Fallon and Briggs and and, and all that and. And, you know, once she came out of that, once I, I want to say it was maybe around the time of like um, right before Mania, where it was like that ladder match. I, I remember being. Impressed yeah, we with talked her. about that. Yeah. Well, off I, camera. Yeah, we talked mm-hmm. about that off her. I remember being impressed with her right then and there. So like spring was like, OK, like she she's good. And then, you know, more feuds with uh, like a, a Roxanne. Uh, you really get to like she's really showcasing her talent. And I feel like. Yeah. Ariana Grace could fall in the same same categories that like that's a good name. That's a good yeah, name. Yeah, that that she could uh you know impress a lot of people this upcoming year. I gotta say, yeah, Kiana James, huge fan. I know Ariana Grace is your pick. She definitely flies under the radar, and um, she had got injured early in 2023. She was supposed to have a pretty promising career. I'm uh with NXT this past year. I'm not sure if she was gonna get singles gold or tag gold, but she had that knee injury. I don't know, mm-hmm. you know, what she tore or whatever, but she was out a while. And she came back, you know, last few months of 2023, getting reacclimated and so on. And so she has thus far. Um, I think uh, she's picked up better than where she left off. I think, you know, this time last year, I was kind of iffy about her. I was like, she has a great look to her, but she needs some improvement in every which mm-hmm. way, you know, wrestling and, and just persona. And it takes time developing the character. I, I do understand that. That's why NXT is good for that. But that's that's a good one. I, I do see, uh, I'm not going to go and say big things for her, but I do see promise there there's definitely something yeah. there we'll love, love to see it um kiana james that again that's another good name um that we could easily see uh in the royal rumble a lot of us right. say tiffany stratton cora jade roxanne perez it's popular it's obvious uh that one of them should if they're going to bring nxt to the rumble but kiana james she could hang with the best of them like you said that ladder match that was ruthless right that ladder match was that stand and deliver um mm-hmm. last year in hollywood so that's a good one uh, for my uh, women's division pick, I'm going to go with now Raw Superstar, but was in NXT just a few months ago, Diamond Mine with the Creeds and such. I'm going to go with Ivy Nile. Mm-hmm. Now, we didn't see Ivy Nile wrestle a lot on NXT, but dude, that match she had two weeks ago, I believe it was, on a, mm-hmm. uh, you know, right into the new year with Rhea Ripley for the obviously the mm-hmm. championship. She was very impressive. Her size, stature, dude, I know she's she could probably, you know, bench press me and you uh, with the, the pink, <laughs> yeah, yeah. pinky. She is, you know, jacked, has a good look. And I, I really think she's coming around very good. And I'm glad that they kept her with the Creeds on Raw. I think that benefited her greatly. I was worried yeah. about her months ago. If you remember when when the Creeds lost that match on NXT and it's, they said they had to leave NXT, we said, oh, geez, Creeds are getting called up to Raw or SmackDown. Great for them. Terrible to Ivy. Uh, for Ivy, rather. She'll flounder on NXT. Not to say she can't handle her own, but it's just her. No one else. I think they put her with uh, Tatum Paxley for a, a couple of weeks or, or a month or so. Tatum Paxley uh, turned on her. She's been a heel ever since. You know, obviously, there were two uh, baby faces together. 
And so Ivy, man, she did you see that match with Rhea Ripley and Ivy Nile two weeks ago? Mm-hmm. She, she looked good. She looked good. And I had seen her on a few matches on NXT. She didn't even have a ton of matches on NXT unless there was yeah, a tournament that, the last couple of years. But this this far surpassed that. I know it's Rhea Ripley, but still. Yeah. So yeah, I was, was going to say, yeah, because because like going through like the list of matches that I've seen her in, it's like very scarce. It's been so, yeah, only a yeah. number, man. I two hands. I don't even think I could. I mean, one hand I could recount as many matches as she's had, at least singles. You know what I mean? So Ivy Nile, I would like to. I don't know what's necessarily in store for her. I know it's you know the main roster now. She didn't win any gold on NXT, I'm pretty sure, because a lot of the times she wasn't given an opportunity. I get it. Very competitive, but it's just as competitive, if not more, on the main uh, roster, right? So I don't know if she's going to get any gold, man, but I will tell you that I'm excited to see uh, her hang in there with the best of them. I think she could really give some of the top women on Raw and SmackDown, obviously she's on Raw now, a run for their money. A lot of former champions, I think, you know, putting her in there eventually with a Becky and so on. She hung in there with Rhea. Why not put her in, you know, with other former multi-time champions, you know, to really build up her resume. Even if it is in a losing effort, fans will remember, like, look, you know, she may not have won any of those four or five matches against former champions. Even if it's against Nia Jax, I'm not saying people are, you know, chomping at the bit for a Nia Jax match. But again, she's a four, uh, former Raw Women's Champion, multi-time tag champion. So look, why not utilize her? So very impressed with Ivy Nile. Exceeded my expectations against Rhea. So I got to go with her as an obvious favorite to see her continue to build her stock uh, while she's on Raw. Yeah. Now, correct me if I'm wrong, but the the Creeds and, and Ivy, they're considered part of the Raw roster, right? Correct. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh-uh. Yeah, they well, signed around well, a little before Thanksgiving, I think. Well, given that, you know, we have the whole draft and whatnot, or, or sometimes we just have people who are traded after Mania um, unexpectedly, I, I could see her, I feel like, working well against, um, you know, what is it? Uh, oh, man, I just forgot her name. Uh, Zelina. Zelina? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 I mean uh, obviously, the, the they're height similar. is there. Yeah. I was going to say, yeah, they're similar in stature. You know, their physiques are different, but, um, and, and I feel like they kind of have almost the same level of like in ring ability. So I feel like there could be a match up there. You're saying that Ivy Nile has a ceiling, bro? <laughs> no, what I will oh. say, <laughs> you could take time to think about that yeah. one. Oh, uh, well, right now, I feel like there's, their skill levels are kind of like neck and neck right now. I don't know what their ceiling could be in the future, whether they both improve. Not, not saying Zelina has one either. Obviously, I mean, we're yeah. just saying the it obvious It sounded like, yeah, size. take out Zelina. I, no, 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 no. I don't no, know if you want to get all. on her bad not side. I love Zelina. Please, yeah. I don't want to piss her off. It's the but, last one. But I'm know, just saying from a size and stature standpoint, I like I don't want to put them in a box yeah. saying like they can only wrestle small. You know, no, women. no. But I feel like that that could be a good – because like a lot of the times when you're trying to find like a good opponent, someone always good to find is like, with near your ring ability and I get it. How shows ability, all that, yeah. Yeah, you know, and we already know that Zelina is probably one of the best on the mics in the entire rock both rosters, you know, Ryan yeah, SmackDown. She's, she's very good. Right. She and did and, great for Andrade too. <laughs> she I would say top five on the mic at least. Um I feel like she could bring something out of Ivy. Okay. Ivy is Ivy isn't necessarily known to be, you know, you know, Oh, someone who really cuts promos or anything, but yeah, she's soft spoken, may- but she speaks up yeah. for herself. Yeah, she- right. So I feel like that could help her build her character. You know, getting into a feud with like a Zelina. All right. Well, look in twenty twenty four. My biggest thing with picking Ivy Nile is, you know, like I said earlier, I was worried when they were going to split her from the Creeds mm. uh, mid through the midway through twenty twenty three, leave her floundering in NXT. Good thing is they decided to put the Creeds back for the remainder of the year, pretty much until they moved them all up. Uh, in the mid-fall to Monday Night Raw. Now I'm okay if they split them during the draft this spring, only under the you know pretenses that uh, they continue to push Ivy Nile. Again, even if it's in a losing effort, they're showing us that she can hang with the best of them, continue to build her stock up. And then if they do draft uh, the Creeds to SmackDown or vice versa, if they keep the Creeds on Raw and, and like you said, Ivy Nile goes to SmackDown, then look, at least... At least people know and the fans know, the talent know, hey, look, she can go with the best of them. She doesn't need to be within a, a, a faction, an alliance, 
any of that. She could hold her own again with that. Hopefully she also improves on the mic, takes more command, but I think she really does. I think she's just very soft spoken. She has like a softer yeah. voice, but I, I think yeah. she'll find her way if they continue to utilize her like they have the past month. And so that's, that's all I hope for Ivy Nile going forward, you know, 2024. Yeah. Now, and, you were, and all I'm doing is throwing out a potential opponent. <laughs> well, oh, like you said, what as far as Zelina? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, no, for sure, for sure. I mean, that would be a great match. There's, there's a few I would like a uh, few people I'd like to see her go up against. Zelina, sure, certainly one. Like I said, Becky Lynch. Why not some former champions at that? All right, so uh, we talked about a uh, one to watch in WWE. Uh, I went with uh, Ivy Nile. You went with Ariana Grace in NXT. Uh, let's go to the men's. Uh, side of things here Ned. you said you wanted me to start with this one yeah yeah, yeah. okay i, I want to hear what you have to say so he, here's my thing i'm gonna do a couple honorable mentions because i've been watching them both since they got to the main roster in 2022 right i'm gonna mm. name the longest reigning intercontinental champion of all time gunther uh since he mm. came to the roster sp- spring mm-hmm. of 2022 defeating ricochet obviously still champ i'm gonna keep a keen eye on gunther we all know he's headed for big things. Um, just because I'm curious to see if in 2024 they're going to put him in the world title picture. Obviously, whenever they do mm. decide to dethr- to dethrone him uh, of the IC title, whether that's at Mania or whatever. And then Solo Sokoa. Again, these two are my honorable mentions. Solo has done a fantastic job with the bloodline the past year and change. They've both been great. So I'm curious to see where they're going to go, gold or not. Uh, they're two classic heels that could have made it in the early 90s, in my opinion. But the one I'm really going to watch for, Kev, as easy as it could have been to mention them, um, because we both had our eyes on them, both of them, they're doing great. But anyway, I'm going to mention a name where I feel like this is his last chance to get over with the WWE crowd. This is a three strikes you're out moment. The first one you can blame on Vince McMahon, uh, poorly dealt with him in what, uh, 2019, 2020. Gets mm. cut, brought back uh, a year and a half ago or so with his wife, Scarlett. I'm going to go with Karrion Cross. I feel like this is it. They gave him this brand new faction last Friday on SmackDown. They mm. brought back AOP with Paul Ellering, which is huge. Those that don't know Paul Ellering, he was with the Road Warriors, the Legion of Doom, Animal and Hawk for quite some time. Uh, as many would say, the best tag team of all time. Certainly my favorite of all time, the Road Warriors. So whenever I see Paul Ellering, I'm good with it. Um, so... If this does not work for him, AOP, Paul Ellering, Scarlett even changed her hair. She looks great. They all look good visibly. If Karrion Cross does not get over, dude, that is my one to watch in WWE in 2024. If this does not work out, that's it. It, He is set up to win right now. You know, you could blame Vince in the past. This, This latest run, I'm not sure who you could blame. Vince really has been a part of the majority of it. It's been Triple H. Yeah, uh, you know, he started with that uh, McIntyre feud in, uh, when he returned in 2022, late 2022. And ever since, it's kind of been blah. It's been blah. Uh, fought Rey Mysterio here and there, a couple others. We know he's a, he's a solid promo. Shoots a great vignette. Decent wrestler. Obviously, his, his uh, presentation's fantastic. Was an NXT. They changed it up now, finally. And so I don't know where you stand on carrying cross at this very moment in time. He's going to be my one to watch because it is imperative. He gets over because if, if he doesn't, then all hope is lost for him. As far as WWE, we know he's a solid wrestler. He can go with the best of them. Seems like an amazing human being, at least from social media. Seems like a good guy, even though he, he uh, runs heel most of the time. Um, that being said, I think this is the last straw, but you know, before you make your pick, What's your two cents on the whole carrying cross situation as far as where he stands and, and potentially this, this new faction? I don't think they have a name yet. Right. Well, I'll answer it in different parts is that I will first off, you know, I will admit that I've never, ever been a fan of him when he was on NXC or on the main roster. That's right. You did but, say that. You did say that. But, but trying to look at it objectively as possible as I can, it, you, you know, it's very obvious that he has – not connected with fans right like he never gets the cheers or anything you know sometimes you i don't think i've ever even seen a sign for him in the the crowd you know even when you get people that love heels they'll they'll have a sign or something uh or people wearing their t-shirts and like i don't see any of his merch out there to be honest um you know so we know that he's been struggling now with this new faction and everything 
should it not work out for whatever reason, I'll be honest, I don't see him, you know, being let go necessarily. I feel like he's one of those people that will just be kept on the undercard. Uh, right, this my, is that, his that, last that, chance, right. He might not get canned after this if this doesn't yeah. work out, but this is the last opportunity like to push, make himself like a, a, a main event, primetime. Yeah. This is his last chance at maybe ever being world champion. Could mm-hmm. he still win a U.S. wrestling title down the road? Maybe. But yeah. this is the last opportunity he has to be a world in the world champion conversation eventually, not even right now. Yeah, if it doesn't work out, I see him just kind of floating around, like you said, maybe the mid, but more specifically the the lower tier of the roster, you know. Okay. Um, no, I hope it works out for him. I really do, man. Um, you know, I'm not going to outright call myself a, a big carrying cross guy. Uh, again, I know you, you don't really care for him, but I, I want to see him succeed. I do. And even if he is a heel, you know, I want him to be a good heel, a heel you despise or a, a heel you can't stand when he gets on the microphone or he beats up your favorite guy out there. And and I don't know. It, again, it's like people just don't really care. And that that's a problem, especially when you're a heel. Uh, because you want them to care, you want them to boo the hell out of you, uh, boo the hell out of you, uh, or have those signs up there, whatever. So I don't know. Well, I, we'll see I don't happens. remember it, who said it. If it was specifically like Vince or maybe some other type of promoter, but uh, you always hear that the worst type of reaction in wrestling is no reaction. Yeah, no, that's a fair point. Fair point. All right, so who do you got? Who who's one to watch for you in the men's division? Raw, All NXT, right. SmackDown. You know, considering you had an honorable pick, I'm gonna go with that first. Okay. Right. And I feel like I'm going to be cheating a little bit with both of my answers. Go for it. Don't worry about it. So, who to watch as an honorable mention in 2024? I'm going to go with, you know, this potential tag team of Idris and Malik. Okay. Uh, They are Malik Blade and Idris and Ophi. Yeah. You know, they're in the tournament. Dusty, Dusty wrote, uh, classic, uh, classic. invitational. Mm -hmm. Right. I, I just feel like they could make it to the finals. Maybe they lose. Maybe they win. They I were in it like last they could... year. They either made yeah. it. To, if they didn't make it to the finals, they at least made it to the semis. But yeah, good tag yeah. team. Good I tag feel team. like, you know, I, I like I like watching them when they're on screen. And I feel like they should have more screen time or, or you know, n- n- not necessarily whether it be promo. It could also be in matches because I feel like they should have more match time would, on NXT TV. Um, would you like to see them solely as a tag team, or do you want to see? Would you prefer them on single I, I success? Do, or I do want to see them as a tag team. I okay. like seeing them as a tag yeah, it's team. It's been a, been over you a know, year. Separate. Two years. I don't know how I feel about them, but together when when they're on screen, I like I like their chemistry. Um, so that's that is a team to watch. And if they lose the tag team classic, I don't think it's the biggest deal in the world because I feel like by the end of the year they will be tag team champions. Very good point. And yeah. I will say this though: the same could be said about last year. They had some very good wins earlier in the year. Uh, mm-hmm. Again, I don't believe they won the Dusty Classic last year. They were certainly in it. And they got they picked up some big wins, I think, in and out of the tournament. And mm-hmm. it's a conversation that could have been had, a, a legitimate argument uh, to say, look, before year's end, these, these two could be tag champions. I, I know they can just as well as you do. I hope that is the case in the mm-hmm. tournament, or even if it's later in 2024. Certainly uh, a great duo. I know they're pushing... Um, Obviously, Tony D and, and Stax, right? They just fought um, OTM out the mud. Mm-hmm. Well, and uh, well, as we've discussed before, I think o- OTM will be tag champs certainly in 2024 as well. Um, mm-hmm. But uh, but I'd love to see Malik yeah. Blade, Idris, and Ofe. They've been at it for a minute in NXT. Oh, singles yeah, I think they, they can absolutely get the ball rolling at, you know, at the start of this year, January, with a huge victory eliminating you know uh, Trick and, 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 Mello. Car- and Car- Carmelo. Oh, yeah, I can see that happening. Is that who they're right. paired up against? Yeah, uh, this, I this believe week? so. You know, and then that only adds more fuel to the fire between those two over there. Yeah, makes sense. Um, Give them a match of stand and deliver easily. Right. Any weekend. Okay. Uh, so now I'm going to give you my official answer of who to watch in 2024. Right, right. I forgot that was your honorary. Right. Sorry. Yeah. I got all and it was a good one, I think. Okay, good one. Good one. Good one. <laughs> Not to toot my own honor. I like that. I like that. Okay. Um, now, this group, they impressed me a lot in 2020. Another tag team. Well, this is an this is actually oh, faction. Okay. Okay, this is okay. actually a faction. Gotcha. And they impressed me so much that I was like, man, there is half of the times on they're on TV, they always have me actually laughing. And, th- and that's very rare in the you know, these days when it comes to wrestling. That's someone they can actually make you laugh out loud, you know, because of their shenanigans is metaphor. Okay. Metaphor. Yeah, I could I could easily see metaphor being called up 
right? Right after the Mania season or whatever. And whether they be on Raw or on SmackDown, I could see them having a lot of good segments, you know, um, just messing with other wrestlers, whatever, having their own little mini feuds. But yeah, I I really enjoy seeing, you know, the the shenanigans of like, no, no, um, no, I'm dark. Yeah. And, and thank you. And, you know, him, you know, just being like, he's such, he's such a good wrestler in the ring. And then like, he's yeah, really he's good at being like too. a little a weasel. Character. I mean, yeah. he was even, uh, I mean, obviously he's been showcasing it a lot more, but even his days on 205 Live, Cruiserweight right. Division 2016, he was one of those originals over there doing his thing. Yeah. And then um, well, he was, after that, he was what, just mainly like kind of like a, a, a main event guy before yeah. that? What's right before, that? Like, before he got moved back down to like NXT, was he not on main event or something? Uh, he may have very well been on, on main event, but I know for the longest time after 205 Live, Cruiserweights and all that, he was on NXT UK for a while. Uh, I don't know yeah. how long he was, if, or if and when he was on main event. He's got a great personality, great in ring style. Uh, to be honest with you, I mean him, Oro Mensa, Lash Legend, Jakara Jackson, all members of the group. I could see them bringing them up, but more so Noam Dar. I don't know if they would bring them up collectively because, personally, as far as the women are concerned, and I do like them, I don't know if they're ready. Per- mm. I want to see Jakara Jackson in NXT longer. I think that's somebody who has a lot to accomplish there. And she was unfortunately pulled from the uh, that, that women's breakout tournament. She was she was one of the names that was supposed to be in there. She got an injury. I think maybe her right forearm or something like that. I don't know if it was a break, a tear, whatever, because you haven't seen her wrestle in at least four, uh, four months. Mm. Jakara Jackson, we saw Lash Legend uh, at that uh, last pay-per-view for, for NXT deadline where she lost. She didn't win the Iron Survivor. But she did the, uh, did the damn thing when she was in there. Again, Blair Davenport won that. Anyway, I'm not so sure if Lash is ready yet. Again, Jakara, she's not ready yet either. But I And I also want to see Jakara do more on NXT once she's healthy. That's the only reason why I would not bring up the group. I want to see more from the women on NXT. Oro Mensa, yeah, I'm mm-hmm. sure he could hang too. Uh, but again, a guy who really, since joining the group, it's been enjoyable. But the only one who's really been... Uh, doing anything of note wrestling wise, and I get it. That's just how it's kind of based. They're kind of like just as like cronies, his posse yeah. is is Noam Dar. I'd like to see Oro get some matches too, but that's just not the yeah. way the group has been built the last six seven yeah. months. They've I been just they've been entertaining him, though. Yeah, I would have just said him solo, but like his character really came to life with the whole group. Uh, I that's agree the with thing. that. So so I, I feel agree. like it's, right. it's it's a necessity. Right. I I think um, he's the only one that's ready to wrestle on the main uh raw or smackdown out of the three mm. but i from a from an entertainment standpoint absolutely if they were strictly just doing that uh, totally i think that's really brought out more, as much as they could from him and his personality but again the only reason i would have them stay put again your pick not mine just mm. just based off of that i want to see more from the women and especially when jakar is healthy because it's unfortunate seeing her uh not seeing her get the opportunity in that women's breakout tournament was lola vice going to win from the jump yeah probably but it would have been nice to see her get the chance to wrestle maybe a couple of matches uh, right. for some, you know, something at stake. All right. So, so those are our choices there. Our ones to watch, I guess you could say. Now, as far as uh, the Rumble is concerned or WWE, I want to see if I had anything else to talk about uh, as far as that goes. I think that was, oh yeah, well, we're going to finish with the whole Roman Rock bit, right? So I'm I'm not going over ba- Battle of the Valley in its entirety or Hard to Kill, uh, TNA yeah. pay-per-view, both taking place this Saturday, actually. Uh, Battle in the Valley is going to be taking place in San Jose. And uh, TNA Hard to Kill, I believe, is in uh, Las Vegas. Uh, so you got one over there in Cali and, and, uh, and Nevada. You got the West Coast jumping. It's going to be going to be a lot of fun. going to be a good one. Um, so, again, uh, TNA Hard to Kill. I believe that's a 10 match card. I want to say Battle in the Valley is a nine match card, uh, something along those lines. Now, Kev, as as we spoke about with TNA, right? Impact, they, yeah. it's always been a revolving door, especially with the women uh, the last few years. Uh, Deanna Perrazzo heads to, a, uh, to AEW. Trinity, aka Na- uh, Naomi, looks like she's heading back to WWE for the Royal Rumble in a couple weeks, especially if she loses to Jordan Grace. Now, losing Perrazzo and Trinity within a month's time is very significant for TNA, especially this relaunch of TNA uh, being that if you think about Trinity first coming to the company in the spring, who are the two that basically uh, were headlining things over the summer, Deanna and uh, Trinity. So losing both of them, major hits to the company. I don't want to say, well, TNA rebound. We know they will. Um, 
But what are your thoughts as far as the women's division are concerned in TNA? I know you don't have as close of a gauge to that as you do with AEW or WWE. If there was one person that's out there that you would sign, or do you think that would sign with them? Because it seems like a lot of these women are spoken for. Mercedes, AEW, Julia, WWE, uh, Deanna went to AEW. Like, who, who would be the next big name that could potentially float out there or that is out there if you were TNA that you would grab mm-hmm. today to kind of help bolster that that roster? Man. Oh, man. Um... Is there one that sticks out that you could see that maybe isn't happy with AEW or WWE that may be on their way out or may walk away that could be like, get a real rejuvenation, if you will, of their career, right. much like Trinity did. You know, much like Deanna Parazzo did. Both happened in Impact. So who do you I, think could benefit most from it if there's one I, woman? I, I was going to say, I really wish I knew more more of the, like the, the, uh, the contracts when it came to the women. Right, as far as Just so that I, I was familiar with, like, even who's someone, actually going to be a free agent in the coming right. months or is or or as, as you were saying like someone who's kind of like more disgruntled you know underutilized etc underutilized right all right um i don't know if, if there's not someone even even like from aw or wwe they could always go the route of um what is it of like an international scene the the one name that stuck out to me um you have to forgive me is uh what's her name stephanie stephanie um uh, the one who was uh, yeah persia perota and uh nxt she goes around with with uh what's his face matt cardona she's been his sidekick the last year on the on the independence right steph the lander yeah steph the lander the the one that was um versing um mercedes monet what at that pay-per-view for uh i think technically it was a. Uh, where was this? What 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 one was this? It was um a while Steph ago. The last, it was last year. What is it not like Stephanie Vacker? Va- it starts with the V. Oh, this is somebody else. Oh, this was mm-hmm. uh this oh this was the initial round before she got to Willow and got injured. Mm-hmm. Oh, we're talking mm-hmm. about two completely different people. I thought yeah, you were talking that's about why Steph I was like, I don't think. Okay, it's the same no, no, person. no. It's totally no. My my mistake on that. Yeah, I know. I don't who, know, what I know her who you're contracts... referring to. I don't know her. Yeah. I don't really know much of her. To be she was. With you. She caught my attention because I I enjoyed I bet she that did. match, um, and I don't know what her contract situation is. I don't know if she's like bouncing between like the Indies or or whatnot. You know, just getting regular work to stay okay. afloat. But if if she could land in like a you know a TNA and make a name for herself and stay there for a couple of years, you know, be a dominant champion, I think that's someone that could you know gain some popularity and then people all right yeah i'm fam- i'm not familiar with it so i can't say anything about that but if that's your choice we'll go with that yeah. i was gonna i'm sorry you got more to say my bad oh I'm no gonna i was off. just gonna i was just gonna add that like if she if she could become popular over in tna then like she'll obviously get more eyes for like an, an AEW or wwe if she decides to go that route in the future fair enough well look i was gonna say red velvet um somebody i would certainly like to see in nxt as well uh, Red Velvet, you know, highly underutilized. We spoke about this yep. many a time on the most recent episode of AEW Dynamite Review and stuff. You know, having her match up with Perazzo this weekend, and it's funny because I figured, man, if Red Velvet, whenever her contract is up, um, I know she was out a long time in 2023 with that knee injury. I'd love to see Red Velvet hop over uh, at minimum to TNA, have great feuds with Perazzo, which she'll have a match with her this weekend. Uh, maybe a <laughs> feud with Trinity, uh, with mm-hmm. Tasha Steeles with somebody she has rapport with in Kylan King. They they tag team together for a little bit in AEW, even in a tournament uh, with NWA a couple of years ago for that Empower pay-per-view. They even made it to the finals, going up against the Hex, I believe it was called, um, So or that they're called. So, you know, I, I thought there was a lot of opportunity for Red Velvet to really get garner some momentum, you know. But now being that Trinity is seemingly leaving in Parazzo, it would still be a good place for her to go, a great landing spot. But again, I don't think she's going anywhere anytime soon. But I think Red Velvet's one name that comes to mind that would definitely benefit uh, getting some shine over there. You know what I mean? Really showcase her skills and not just taking losses uh, week after week. Yeah. And, and hey, maybe she can meet Stephanie over there. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Stephanie. Uh, well, you know, it's funny. It, it, Red, it, yeah, Red it, yeah, I think it is Backer. What's that? It, it, it's it's spelled V-A-Q-U-E-R. Well, you know what the funny thing is? Mm. You know what Red Velvet's first name is, right? Uh, I'm going to guess Stephanie. 
Yes. So there's going to be a whole <laughs> whole bunch of Stephanies that we're sending over to right. uh, said companies. But okay, so that's pretty much that. Now look, TNA, Hard to Kill, again, uh, it's this Saturday. I'm going to tell you what match I'm looking forward to the most. It is a 10-match card, three matches on the pre-show, seven on the main. And there's a lot here. I got to go with the four-way tag team match for the TNA World Tag Team Championship. They're beautiful, by the way. These new belts that they were all given this week, the tag titles are actually red. I think they're the only ones with the red strap. Everything else is black. The current champions. I might, I might have seen a picture of that, I feel like. Oh, dude, they're beautiful. I'll have to send one over to you after this show. ABC, Chris Bay and Ace Austin, two-time um, TNA, now TNA champs, going up against the Rascals, Zachary Wentz, uh, formerly known as Nash Carter with um, MSK, right, with Wesley. Him and Trey Miguel, Speedball Mountain, which is Mike Bailey and Trent Seven, and the Grizzled Young Veterans, Zach Gibson and James Drake. That's going to be fun. Obviously, they recently, uh, you know, parted ways with WWE, part of the, uh, what was it, the Dyad uh, with Joe Gacy and so on. So they mm-hmm. were very uh, unhappy the last couple of years. Glad to see them finally getting some momentum. That's going to be a great four-way tag team match. Other than that, uh, there will be a, a couple other good ones to look forward to. Trinity versus Jordan Grace. That should be fun. Alex Shelley versus Moose for his TNA championship should be good as well. And if I had any other match uh, to mention on that card that I'd really be looking forward to, it would probably be the Kushida versus Chris Saban, who's the current uh, X Division champion, and El Hijo uh Del Vikingo, right? That El Ijo, is that how you say it? Say it? El Ijo, yeah, yeah. El Ijo, thank you. Del Vikingo, who we've seen many a time yeah. uh, on AEW over the course of the last year and a half. Yeah, th- see, now that match sounds like a fire match. That sounds yeah. like a great It looks like a great card, dude. It, it, and it's tough for, you know, the, the avid wrestling fan that likes to bounce around and look at all these different promotions because Battle in the Valley, the same night, again, headlined, uh, headlined by Okada and Osprey. Moxley's on the card. Kingston's on the card. Matt Riddle's on the card. Uh, we got Julia defending her title, her strong women's title against Trisha Dora. Uh, we got uh, Grizz- Gorillas of Destiny going up against the War Dogs, TJP, David Finley, uh, and a couple others. So it, two very good cards for those that, you know, enjoy pro wrestling outside of WWE or, you know, AEW or whatever. Some of these people you've seen on AEW before, uh, two very good shows that people have the opportunity to purchase Hard to kill, I want to say, is $40, and Battle in the Valley is $20. And, uh, yeah, that's pretty much it, that as far as those two shows are, are concerned. Right. Yeah. It... I going to say something <laughs> if you else. Know... If you're Kevin there. No, but... <laughs> <laughs> I got in trouble for that last year. So, What were you going to say? No, no. Uh, it absolutely buy, buy the pay-per-views. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Sure thing. All right, so mm. last but not least, Kev, I want to get to uh, the million-dollar question. And I'm going to close my notepad here because I don't think I'll need it. Um, we'll just have sheer conversation and debate, and then we'll wrap this episode up. Right. You have The Rock winning this year's Royal Rumble. I have CM Punk as it stands now. This isn't my yeah. official written in stone. It could change in two weeks. Yeah. Uh, just like last year, mine changed. I was going with Cody for a while. And then literally a few days prior, I said, you know what? I'm going to dare to be different. I'm going to go with The Rock at number 30. Mm-hmm. Unfortunately, Cody came out at 30 and won it. It is mm-hmm. what it is. I'm not going with The Rock this year. Going with CM Punk as it stands. Not con- not seeing Cody as a two-time Royal Rumble winner. All that being said, though, you got The Rock. I got Punk. I got Punk going versus Rollins. You have Rock I- presumably going up against Roman Reigns at Mania, I would assume. Now, I see things a little different. You know, I see, uh, as we kind of spoke about through in, uh, you know, prior to this episode, through text the last couple of days, I see, um, which may be unpopular opinion, is what it is. I see uh, Roman Rock at the Elimination Chamber in Australia. Not to say it shouldn't be at WrestleMania, and I'm not even saying that Cody is going to finish his story at WrestleMania 40 mm. in Philadelphia, the, the city of brotherly love, the home of the Liberty Bell. I mean, Cody Rhodes' daughter's name is Liberty. It's perfect, perfect way to end this. Not saying he's going to do it, though. I'm not so not so sold on that. They might have him go and beat Hogan's record in the fall, right? What was it September, October? Mm. Anyway, that being said, you know, I'm not a big fan of The Rock just kind of showing up here and again i'm not Mm. opposed to the match 
And, and you may say, hey, Pat, you're a hypocrite because last year you had The Rock just showing up at the Rumble and winning. Because right. it made sense. It made sense for The Rock to go up against Roman in Hollywood. Obviously, that's saying, you know, Rock being Holly, Mr. Hollywood himself these days. Um, yeah. it, it made sense. I wish we saw that match last year and that we that we were to see Cody and Roman this year. We may still see part two. Again, Cody still may not finish the story. Yeah. Will he ever? Perhaps, but it might not be against Roman. You know, I think that's fair to say. <laughs> um, that being said, you can make just a, as big of a match in Australia at Elimination Chamber. I get it. Why do it there when a milestone mania is right around the corner? Again, it is a big stadium show in, in mm. Australia. It's a huge show, even though it's the Elimination Chamber. I get it. Either way, I feel like there's no wrong answer. And it, if you choose, you know, whether it be Elimination Chamber or Mania, the way I see it, though, I just think it makes more sense to have Roman Cody Part 2 at Mania instead of just inserting The Rock. I understand why Endeavor and TKO would want The Rock, the first Mania, under their ownership, right? They yeah. might want to say, hey, Cody, <laughs> you know, we'll see you later. We love you, but look, keep selling your merch. Keep making the fans happy. Right. And, you know, we'll get to you a little bit later down the line. Maybe SummerSlam. Maybe next Mania, 41. <laughs> right now, we need to focus on the most electrifying uh, man in sports entertainment, The Rock, Roman. Everybody pretty much knows Roman's got to retain, right? He's got to be the head of the table still, regardless of the outcome. That's where I stand. That's where I stand. I see it, Cody, Roman, and I, you know, I, again, Rock, Roman could happen at the chamber. That's just what I'm feeling. But let me hear, let me hear your, you know, two cents on the, on the matter. I, I know you see Roman Rocket Mania, but I mean, how do you feel? And then and then where do you stand with the whole Cody? Yeah. What, what's he to do? I, I, I'll I'll get to all of that and all right. more. All right. So floor is yours. You know, prior to to Raw this week, uh, I thought you know Cody versus Roman was a given. Absolutely, Cody's gonna finish the story, and you know he's gonna go on and be champion. And then, of course, after, you know, Jinder Mahal stopped talking, you know, we got The Rock and everything. And let me tell you this. I am sick and tired of seeing The Rock's goddamn face. I might be in the minority compared okay. to some other people. But, you know, it, within the last, what, year or so, or the last two years, we got to see him quite a bit. And this has to do with the perspective of, like, WWE and outside of WWE is that like I don't think he's a good actor. I get he's the highest paid actor, but it doesn't mean he's Ooh. a good actor. None of his movies entertain me. Uh, he's he gets brought everywhere you for here for there. You see him with Oprah. You see him with uh, you have to forgive me. Um, the the coach that was for the Colorado Buffalo. What Deion, Deion Sanders? Sanders? Yeah. You see him brought over there. You see him brought on mm -hmm. Game Day for ESPN. Uh, it, I'm. No, I, I understand I, where you're coming I, from. I, too, I get too it. much exposure of The Rock. You see him on Joe Rogan. So this Rogan's is this is coming from the guy that picked The Rock, though, in the Rumble. Just yep. to be sure. Okay. All right. Yep. Yep. Making yep. sure. I, Doubling oh, down. I know what I'm doing. Trust all me. All right. All right. All right. Yeah. I trust. So, you. so you know, we're we're painting this picture of The Rock. The Rock has said on interviews multiple times that you know he would love to do something beyond acting. You know, and just lo and behold, after all this, we we know all of this. He he shows his face on raw you know and i can only expect him to you know you know to go one-on-one -on -one with roman and i think that this is gonna finally forgive me but this is gonna finish roman's story of finally being quote unquote you know the head of the table the chief of the family is that what you go back to what was it 2015 royal rumble he got you know the rock is the one who made the save for roman right he was yep. he was being well, yeah, yeah. Post match up. after after uh, and, Reigns and, won the Rumble, it was in Philadelphia. And, and yep, I was just about to say, where did that happen? Philadelphia. So now these two are going to face see. each other. Where? Philadelphia. Makes sense. So I'm just trying to connect all these little dots or whatever. And and as I just expressed, I expect The Rock to win at the Royal Rumble. I expect him to face Roman Reigns, but I also expect him to lose, so we can finally you know clap our hands, dust them off, and send The Rock off back to Hollywood. <laughs> right sure. roman i um you know he's going to be champion for a little bit longer whatever whoever he faces but i also want to include the rest of what i'm envisioning and no this is super early this is what we're not even in the 
what we're like in the second week of January. So this is super early, but I'll just throw out these matches. What I kind of see happening in my mind. You, you said you see um, LA Knight versus Logan Paul, right? Correct. For the U S championship. Mm -hmm. Okay. So for me, I honestly said, I see Cody Rhodes versus Logan Paul. That way I can see them using some type of corny line of like the American dream with the American nightmare being the, you know, the United States champion. I can see Michael right. Cole saying something <clears throat> corny okay. along those lines, but it would make for a great picture and, and like great footage, you know, uh, anytime they, they, they use that in, you know, in the future or whatever, you know, him holding up the U S title, the American nightmare. And then to play off of that, I want to go to LA Knight. And LA Knight, I actually see him defeating Gunther, and he takes oh. the, the IC title over at SmackDown. Okay. How did those yeah. two end up crossing paths? Say, anything could happen in wrestling. I don't know what's going to happen after Royal Rumble. I don't know whether uh, Gunther decides to attack him or whether <clears throat> LA Knight decides to call him out. Sure. That would be, be my lines. biggest holdup. How do you... How do you get yeah. LA Knight to Raw and how do you get Cody to SmackDown without winning the Rumble for the mid card championship? I'm I'm not opposed to either. Right. Like, how hey, does it happen? I, I mean, we always get the, the kind of like the crossing of the brands. So right. that right. that okay. for me right. for me, like there there really is no issue. It's just the writers gotta come up with something. All right. Yeah, I guess yeah. if one makes the move, whoever it is, LA to Raw or Cody to SmackDown, one has to do it first. And if that person's being challenged, then I guess the other one would be open. Well, within well discussions the thing is the that GMs. the GM would be well, like, all right, let me get this guy. And then. Well, the other thing that I wanted to, to that I double checked was that Cody is a part of the raw brand. Right. Right. So he would bring over the, the U.S. title to raw. And then L.A. Knight is part of that SmackDown roster. If he wins, then he brings over the IC title to, over there. OK, so they're going to visit there just to take the title back. Mm hmm. Right. Yeah, more more along those lines. They don't have to. They don't have to like trade or okay. anything. Well, right. It, it, well, the biggest thing here is it would have to be an even exchange. But the logistics could be worked out. We've seen crazy things happen before, and so I don't want to hold you up with that. So yeah. Okay. So after that, Cody, LA Knight, and and all that stuff. Then then. Mm -hmm. So what yeah. now? Talking about the Rock and Roman and and so on. So you see that at Mania. Bottom line, night two, main event. I don't know which night to be honest, whether it's one or because what Austin and and Owens they did night one in, one right yeah thirty eight mm -hmm. and I don't know if if Punk is trying to be you know like the end match of Mania Man, even me, if, even if he loses like maybe he wants to just be the final match of the, of the whole thing I don't know I don't think he's gonna get that um, I don't think he's gonna get that kind of opportunity even if he wins mm -hmm. the Rumble like I suggest Punk's gonna win it. I think he's not going to get but, that platform because they're going to say, look, that's all nice and good that you got that uh, Rumble win maybe for this title opportunity against uh, mm -hmm. Seth Rollins, but let's call it what it is. Rollins has been champion for, by this point in time, 10, 11 months. Uh, Roman's been champion for going on three and a half plus years at that point. I think he gets to close the show the mm -hmm. weekend. You know what I mean? That would be my right. hold up uh, No, I do, I do think logically it makes more sense to have the, the Rock and – roman if they if that were to happen to, yeah. to close out the whoever roman faces weekend whoever roman um, faces rock cody the, whoever the other curveball that i just wanted to throw out there is uh kind of the obvious that we missed was like the elimination chamber the, the winner of that right is should the champion not be there but in that match they essentially get a title shot correct that i see i could see cm punk winning that if, if he doesn't win the rumble okay well that's where i see cody uh, winning yeah. <laughs> his, well, that's where I see Cody winning his opportunity. See, mm -hmm. uh, right, that makes sense. You have Cody, yeah, you could see Cody win that, but now, so, okay, so that's where you had right, all right. So you have Cody in the in the mid card title along with LA Knight, and that's where you see Punk winning that opportunity against Rollins there. Okay, and mm -hmm. I have Punk in the Rumble, and I have Cody at the Elimination Chamber, and then obviously it yeah. tells its own story. Um, uh, okay, I mean, there, there, there's a very high probability that we are both wrong. <laughs> hey, look, uh, got to take a take a chance, stand a chance here. So, yeah. um, it's going to be interesting. Look, I could just as easily see the Rock and Roman main eventing uh, WrestleMania. Doesn't you know take a rocket scientist? I could easily see that. It just, I think it's more settling for the fan base and Cody, who's been here, uh, you know, going through the likes of Brock Lesnar, big and small, Dominic Mysterio's, and many others. Uh, finding his way back to Roman in some capacity a year later, 
uh, having to win a chamber match. Didn't win the Rumble, or even if he does win the Rumble, whatever. However, he finds his way back to Roman. Uh, you just hope he gets the job done at Mania, but still, that's left to be desired. Let's just get to the let's just get to that match first, and then we'll see what happens. But oh, it's very interesting. It's got to be uh, one of the two, I would assume. Now, let's just say some something bizarre at a left field happens, right? Let's just say at WrestleMania, it's not The Rock or Cody, where it's got to be one of them. Who realistically, there's probably no right answer to this, who could go up against Roman Reigns at WrestleMania? I mean, if we see Punk and Reigns, it's got to happen down the line, title or not. But Punk's going for Rollins, right? Yeah. One would assume. So who, who would Reigns' third option be if there ever were to be one? Just... Out of curiosity. The only, the only name that I could throw out there, but it doesn't make sense for a WrestleMania match. Gunther? Because he's No, I wasn't going to say Gunther. It, okay. it, I was going to say, um, that's what I was saying. Like, it doesn't really make sense. I could see him having a feud with Solo, but that but that matchup Solo, happened. Yeah. I think those happen after. I think those It wouldn't make after. sense at WrestleMania. Yeah, it could happen yeah, after. Right. Jimmy, Uso, um, uh, Solo, that could all happen after. Yeah. That's why I don't. I, I, one that can happen specifically at WrestleMania. I don't know. Because he's being everyone else on the roster. I would love to see uh, Solo versus Roman at SummerSlam. That's that's a good SummerSlam match. Mm -hmm. That would be a lot of fun. Because by then, you know, you could work out or lack thereof. All the tensions between them, the bloodline completely splits or who knows what happens. But specifics wise. But all right. So those are our opinions. As far as The Rock are concerned and Cody Rhodes and who should face uh, Roman Reigns in the main event uh, for that uh, undisputed WWE Universal Championship. And, uh, you know, obviously you have The Rock coming out of the Rumble. I have Punk coming out of the Rumble. You have uh, Punk coming out of the Elimination Chamber. I have Cody coming yeah. out of the Elimination Chamber. Look, we might we might change our minds. Well, at least me. I'm not setting this in stone, but as of this right. very episode, two weeks prior to the show... Look, things may change as long as it's before the show, right? You can't can't change once uh, once uh, the rumble begins. But all right, well, Kev, anything else you'd like to add before we get out of uh, here? I I think that I I've said my, my said piece. your piece. All right, yeah. good way good way to end. Um, look, it was just announced WWE. I'm not sure how much you watch this, Kev, but since 2021, I've been watching religiously. It's been great, great job they've done. A and E, uh, WWE on A and E is back beginning Sunday, February 25th. Uh, it's presented uh, again WWE and A A E uh, A and E. So reading the handle, mm -hmm. the at uh, new season of WWE Rivals at 8 p.m. followed by WWE Legends biography at 9 p.m. And we've come to find out that one of the shows or one of the wrestlers rather rather that will be airing uh, on the Legends episode, the biography of the British Bulldog. Uh, I saw that his daughter posted. Finally, my dad's documentary is airing. I don't believe they've mentioned anybody else. But it's been great. Have you watched any of that the last couple of years? Uh, those <laughs> documentaries or the, even those shows, Hidden Treasures and, and Rivals and such, they're pretty good. They're very well executed. I, I will honestly admit that... Uh, you haven't watched when, one, have you? I was going to say, when, when it comes to wrestling content that isn't wrestling itself, but re but related to wrestling, that, that normally does it not keep my attention, I will admit. So that those are some shows i have not watched yeah they're pretty good i gotta say they're well executed um you know they've done numerous ones uh stone cold Bret hart Shawn michaels booker t roddy piper you name it there's so many others that's just the biographies and most of those mm. were season one macho man ultimate warrior and so on um they again right. they have the rivals and they did the hidden treasures season one i think they they haven't done that since then but all very good. All very good shows. <laughs> so I think I've pretty uh, much watched all of them, all two or three seasons. I was just going to say, if anyone's listening, anyone's watching, and they don't believe it, this man lives, breathes wrestling all the time. Yeah, this is this, <laughs> this is uh, this is true for those that are not aware that I do. So uh, many yeah. could attest to that, if, especially if, you, the associate. If there's a wrestling documentary out there that he hasn't seen, oh boy, he will watch it. <laughs> I will watch it. I will. Dark Side yeah. of the Ring, you name it. And uh, if I ever have my own documentary, uh, you'll be you'll probably be talking on half of it, the associate and uh, all the convention chronicles we've had right over the years. A lot of good yeah. times, even the mishaps. Uh, a lot. Yeah. <laughs> I was yeah. going to say all those photos back there. Yeah, all the photos that are all around the studio here. And um, uh, unfortunately, there's not many right behind me, although there's the one with Sting, Sasha Banks, Sheamus, and The Undertaker, one they can't see. But yeah, a lot of good memories. Even the uh, 
not so fond memories like when mark henry almost put me through uh you know a table yeah. but we had some good times. even the awkward moments at conventions yeah even the awkward ones we have we could uh well we did a few episodes when we started up the podcast when i started that up a few years ago but anyway that's enough for one day kev thank you so much uh, for joining me yet again on the turnbuckle topics podcast always a blast having you on and uh see you soon can we talk maybe the aftermath or, or whatnot of rumble and uh you know, leading into AEW Revolution March 3rd, Sting's final match. Found out it's likely the Young Bucks. And and so, uh, fun times. Right, yeah. Uh, we'll see how well our <laughs> predictions aged in a few months. Yeah, I'm we'll sure, see. I'm we'll sure see. the fans will let us know. Yeah, I'm sure they will. <laughs> or, or we'll let one another know how they fared. Mm, yeah. All right, guys. <laughs> As always, thank you for tuning in to the Termical Topics Podcast. I'm your host, Pat Thanine. That is the Associate and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for listening.